Blank Book by Regidar Twilight sat, blinking at the pages of the blank book. It was an odd book, completely blank, completely unreadable due to the lack of text, but it kept her entrapped anyways. She turned another page, yes, it too was blank. An empty, boundless, blank expanse where beautiful black bunches of text should have been. Her eyes scanned it to check if the font was just very small or very light, but no. If the font had been small, she could have been able to detect faint lines of black scurrying across the page, shading the paper grey. If it had simply been too light, a similar circumstance would have been achieved. No, this paper was blank. Twilight turned yet another page. The same sight greeted her there, no words to be found. Just pristine, untouched pages, pure white from lack of inscribing. Wait, Twilight muttered to herself, staring at the pages. Pure, N no damage at all. She flipped through the pages faster now. One after another, the pages were the same. No page markers, no tiny quips, not even some ink stains. Just barren page after barren page. Twilight glanced down at the book, sighing. Gently, she flipped over the book, looking at the back cover. It was a simple leather cover, with some dirt pressed into it from where it had lain on the ground. Other than that, it was undamaged, completely devoid of marks, scratches or burns. Its leather cover told Twilight where it was from. Only the Griffin Empire bound their books with leather. Why would I have a blank book from the Griffin Empire? Twilight mused aloud. No one answered her. She heard a shout for another bucket of water, which she dismissed right away. She had to keep her mind focused on the book. Setting it down on the ground again, she opened it to the first page. Where a title page would usually be, there was nothing. She flipped a page where a table of contents would usually be. There was nothing. Groaning in frustration as her annoyance with the book mounted, Twilight slammed the book shut, staring at the front cover. No title. At first, Twilight had thought it to be a journal, yet there was no name written inside. There were no lines to guide the writing of an individual so that it would not run messy all along the page, wild and out of control. The pages were not numbered as dates, so it could not be a day planner. Its being empty made it a curiosity, one that she needed to explore at all costs. Could there be something hidden in the book? Twilight wondered to herself. Maybe hidden in the binding? Taking a deep breath, Twilight lifted the book into the air with her magic, and scrolled through the book to the page where the papers were tethered together with red twine. Shaking slightly, Twilight began to untether the pages of the book. Painstakingly, she removed the string, and the papers broke apart into two neat stacks, held together no doubt by some sort of adhesive. Still, they'd be easy enough to pry apart now. Twilight slowly disassembled the book, checking every piece of paper once more, just in case words had decided to show their face now that the book had been torn asunder lovingly. Breathing slow, deep breaths, the alicorn set all the pages to one side and moved on to the cover. The cover was where she had suspected the book's secret items were hiding, if it held any secret items at all. Staring down at the cover, she hesitated. Was she really willing to damage the cover of a book on the off chance that something may be there? She moved her magical aura to contain only a small portion, vertical across the cover of the book. Twilight swallowed hard. Could she do this? The magical aura dissipated, and Twilight slumped, sighing in a pained manner. She couldn't bring herself to break the book's cover, not when she wasn't absolutely sure what was within. Taking all the book's pieces, she bound it back together. The pages were divided evenly on the inside of the front and back covers, and they were tethered back together thusly. At last, she magically adhered the book back together and flipped through it, good as new, which still told her nothing. 
Twilight pouted, her bottom lip jutting out. This was beyond exasperating. Why would there just be a simple, blank book from the Griffin Empire sitting in her... Unless, of course, it wasn't so simple after all. Twilight Sparkle giggled to herself. Of course. Why hadn't she thought of it earlier? It was magical. The secrets of this book had to be magically disguised. Nothing grandiose, though. She would have noticed a particularly strong aura emanating from it by default. This meant that this book hadn't been transfigured from something else, or tethering an object in the ether. However, the spell that made text invisible was a very light, almost undetectable spell. Unless some pony is looking for it, she exclaimed out loud, getting a strange look from a passing pony carrying burnt branches on her back. Twilight ignored this and turned her attention back to the book. Firing up her detect magic spell, she enwrapped the book in a light lavender glow and sponged the book for magical detail. Nothing. Twilight stared at the book, transfixed, her facial expression unwavering. Slowly, her left eye began to twitch, and her teeth began to slide over one another, grinding audibly. In a moment of utter despair, the alicorn flung the book onto the ground, letting out a cry of anguish. The book fell open to a random page, closer to the front than the back. Twilight did not look at it at first, and she felt that she didn't need to. It would be as blank as always. Nothing would have changed. She screwed her eyes shut, a tear falling from both as she was hammered by waves of frustration. Still, curiosity gnawed at her. She had to check, just to be certain. Carefully, almost tentatively, Twilight opened one eye and glanced down at the book. Predictably, the pages were still bare of words. She didn't even feel any sorrow from having it reaffirmed. She did feel sorrow. A blazing, intense sorrow from what was now laying on top of the pages. A few scattered ashes that lay on the white paper, now marring it with little black marks. The marks were nothing as well. No text came from them. Just contact smudges. A hoof rested on her shoulder as Twilight continued to stare back at the book. Twilight? She heard Applejack's voice say to her. I think it's safe to go inside now. Twilight nodded and brushed the ashes away with a hoof. The little black marks smeared slightly, but they would not leave. Closing the book, she levitated it beside her as she stood upright and began to walk slowly towards what remained of the Golden Oaks library. It was nothing but a shell now, a burnt husk the top leaves almost gone, the trunk now scorched and twisted, what was left of it hanging off, completely blackened. The door, which had been blasted to bits earlier by Twilight herself by a strong blast of alcohol magic, led into the remains of the first floor. Twilight stepped through the door frame and onto the ash-coated remains of the inside of her library. Bookcases were smouldering, their flames having been put out by the helpful members of Ponyville's volunteer fire department. Some smoke still swam in the air, and for the most part, it had risen out of the decimated trunk that had at one time been Twilight's home. The other ponies stood there, Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie. Fluttershy was staring at Twilight, her eyes watering. Pinkie Pie was staring down at the floor, a sombre expression on her face something Twilight was not used to seeing. The pink pony turned to look at the approaching one and smiled a half-hearted, empty smile. Hey, hey, Twilight! Pinky began, stuttering slightly, and then falling silent at the look Twilight gave her back. It was not an angry, aggressive look, but rather a deep gaze of grief. Pinkie Pie stepped back as Twilight stepped forward, Fluttershy turned to Twilight, who was looking upon the bookshelf nearest to her. Oh, Twilight, I am so sorry. Twilight said nothing, and instead continued to look at the shelf. It had been where, at one point, almost all the books on equestrian history had sat. 
Now there was nothing but a few scorched pieces of planks and a half-burnt book, the title having been eaten away by the flames. Twilight levitated it up, ashes and burnt pages fluttering out from it. Opening the book, she choked back a sob as she scanned it, all the pages unreadable. She heard the sound of hooves behind her, multiple pairs, and shivered as she felt three hooves rest around her shoulders. Applejack, Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie all scooted closer, enveloping Twilight in a warm, inviting hug. Twilight's magic relinquished the book, and it fell into an ash pile on the floor. She closed her eyes, letting their embrace swallow her, as if it numbed the pain of so much knowledge lost. She heard more hooves enter the library, and felt another joining the hug. Rarity. In a rush of smoky air, there was a final addition to the embrace. Rainbow Dash. The six of them stood there, in a big hug, as they once had in the same place all that time ago, back when the library was a full, beautiful tree, and when they had been smiling. There were no smiles here, just the sombre holding of friends, hoping that for just one moment, it would all go away. Twilight was the first to open her eyes. She glanced around at the ponies hugging her, all of them still close-eyed and squeezing tightly. Heaving a heavy sigh, she began to squirm out from between the group of them. They graciously parted, all opening their eyes one after another, watching as Twilight walked outward. Rainbow Dash was the first to speak. Did you find anything? Any books, I mean. Safe books. Twilight lifted her wing, where she guessed she must have put the blank book when she went to pick up the burnt one. Just... just one. What is it about? asked Rarity. Nothing. Twilight's voice was a dry croak as she spoke the words. Nothing? Twilight nodded, levitating the book up and flipping through the pages for the others to see. Empty. Blank. No one wrote in it. Not a griffin. Not a pony. Not a dragon. No one. Looking out about the ruins of her library, Twilight closed her eyes again. Tears were beginning to flow fresh from her eyes. The pain of so much lost almost overwhelming and completely unbearable. Twilight inhaled deeply, the smoky air causing her to cough violently. Looking down at the blank book in her magical grasp, she almost felt at peace. This strange new feeling dawning upon her, Twilight's face screwed up in perplexity. What was going on? Trotting over to her lectern, the only fixture of the library that had survived completely, a mere scorch mark running down the side, she cleared its top of ashes. The blank book was dropped upon it, and she looked at the cover with an increasing sense of tranquility. After a few moments, Twilight heaved a sigh and smiled softly down at the book. Turning back to her friends, she gestured for them to come closer. As they did so, she herself looked down at the lectern shelves, her smile getting wider as she saw that most of the contents had been unharmed. Some bottle of ink had broken and spilled on the parchment below, and some of the quills had been singed. But for the most part, all of it was fine. Levitating up an unbroken ink bottle and an unscorched quill, she lay them to the side of her book. While I was looking at this blank book, Twilight told her friends as they gathered around her. I had something of an epiphany, I guess you could call it. I don't know how this book came to be in my possession, nor do I know what its purpose was. For everything I know, it was just a blank book that a careless griffin printer accidentally boxed with a bunch of other books. I do know one thing, though. I need to move on. We need to move on. It won't be immediate, and it won't be quick, and it certainly won't be easy. Twilight paused and took a breath. And it needs to start sometime. So how about now? Twilight levitated the book into the air. This is a blank book. Blank books positively beg to be written in, to be filled. So, let's do it. Her friends were silent for a moment 
before Rainbow Dash broke the tension. Um, what exactly are we supposed to write about in it? Twilight grinned. The Golden Oaks Library, of course. Every building needs a bit of history to it. And we were here for part of it. I lived in it, even. All of you can help out, and I can do the research for the deeper history. I've always wondered who owned it before me. All of her friends nodded in agreement, and chatted amongst themselves, content with this decision. Twilight's smile widened, and dipped the quill in ink. Carefully, she wrote, The Golden Oaks Library, on the cover of the blank book. Waiting a moment for it to dry, she opened the cover of the book, and skipped two pages. One for the title page, another for the table of contents. Staring at the page she had flipped to, Twilight paused for a moment, and then moved her quill down to the page. Chapter 1 Hello everypony, I'm back again. I just wanted to take a few minutes to kind of explain what's going on with the channel and uh, a, a little brief update on what's happening with me and first off I just wanted to give a brief explanation about the last few videos. They've been kind of on a theme of uh, how I've been feeling lately, all the way from I feel fantastic the murky number seven short, and now this. I kind of want to start again. I want to draw a line under what's been going on with uh, the move and changing jobs and and the channel in general, and uh, and start again. And that's what the last, at least the last couple of fix have been about. Murky number seven is about. Uh, about his dream, about creating, about what he wants from life. And this one was very much about that uh, starting again. So my house didn't burn down, but it, it, it's sort of the same. It was about as close as I could find. So that's where the last few fix have been, have come from. It's kind of just my life what's been going on and uh hopefully now we can start again draw a line and start getting things out i want to try and get into a a more productive habit of releasing fix as often as possible and having more variety because i tend to go through a period of i'll release nothing but clop there'll be clop and then another one and then another one or there'll be um nothing but sad fix something depressing because that's how i'm feeling but um i want to get into more of a uh, more like uh, brad and wing do with releasing a clop and then a normal fix so friendship is grievous it's probably going to be my normal fic for quite a while but in between chapters of that i want to release a lot of other one shots and maybe a few multi-chapter normal fix i've got a few in mind we'll uh we'll get to those as and when we can but yeah i've um moved house i was going to put a video up a little tour of the new flat or apartment whatever you want to call it but uh it's an absolute wreck at the moment i'm waiting for some new furniture to come 
and there's a lot of decorating to do. Um, so I was going to wait for that to all be in place before I made the video. Also, I might be getting a new camera, so that might uh, have better quality. So I was kind of waiting for that as well. The main problem I'm having with getting things recorded at the moment, it's not time or the will to do it. I've been recording quite a few things recently, but most of them have been scrapped. And you may be able to hear behind me why that is. Just listen for a sec. I don't know how that picked up on the mic today, but um, every day it seems I sit down to record something and the birds start going off outside. And um, the door to my new apartment is only very thin and wooden. It's got a single pane of glass in it and the birds, it just doesn't stop the noise even slightly. So anytime I record anything and try to edit it, it takes me flipping forever. It, it's it's a nightmare. So um, that's the trouble I've been having. I've had parts of um, things recorded. They've just been scrapped because there's birds just tweeting all in the background and there's nothing I can do about it. So um, you may have heard a little bit of that just now. I, I tried to edit out as much as I could, but when they tweet over me talking... There's not a great deal I can do. A uh, solution is on its way, hopefully. Uh, hopefully in the next few weeks to a month, I'm either going to be getting new doors and windows along with the uh, rest of the house, which is hopefully, say, the next couple of maybe six weeks or so. But that's really not good enough. I want to get things recorded, so... I'm going to try and find somewhere else to record. Maybe a studio somewhere I can um, set up in. I have to pay for that, which is a pain because I don't have any money at the moment. But I need to find somewhere to sit down and record where I won't be disturbed by the fucking birds. Also, the floor above me is the main house's kitchen, and that's tiled. So whenever anyone decides they want to get up and make a cup of coffee, they uh, grab a pogo stick and they seem to jump from one end to the fucking other, make their cup of tea and then jump all the way back. Well, that's what it sounds like from down here. So that's another issue that's being sorted out. I'm going to have um, a new ceiling put in. We're going to have all kinds of sound deadening things going on. But again, time that uh, I really don't want to be away from YouTube. I want to be uploading. I'm also in the process of getting materials and the know-how to build my own insulated sound booth. But again, that's going to take at least a couple of weeks to to sort out. Uh, mainly because I don't know how much room I'm going to need to do it. So I've got new furniture coming for the place in a couple of weeks. So once that's in, I'll be able to see exactly how much room I've got. So I'll be able to order myself all the wood and fixings and soundproof doors and a whole load of stuff I'm going to have to order, but I don't know how much I'm going to need until I see how much room there's left. So that's the that's going to fix a lot of my recording issues because no sound's getting in there. Um, I don't know what else to say. Normally I script this, I write everything down. But today I've decided to freehand it. So this will be edited, but uh, it's just one recording from when I started to when I finish, when I've uh, finished talking all this bollocks. And hopefully it won't be longer than the fic was. Because that's a concern. That's the other problem my fucking computer. You hear that? Every time I sit down to record, the stupid, stupid Perspex panel heats up and cracks. And uh, it puts me off no end. Every time I'm trying to record something, crack in the middle of my word. And I have to start again, and it's annoying. So that computer's going, and I'm getting a new case. Going to have to rebuild the computer inside it. So that's going to be 
I don't know, maybe another couple of weeks. Again, everything is all time. Hopefully, not too much. Because I, I want to get, I want to get on to other things. I've got Friendship is Grievous to uh, to get on and record. There's a lot coming in that. It's going to be amazing when it's finished. I'm sure, or I hope. Well, it's already amazing. I just hope I don't fuck it up. Um, there's lots of clops coming out. I've got uh, other things that I want to start doing. Uh, someone asked me recently about Patreon. They said, did I have a Patreon that they could um, send me money through? Because they felt like they wanted to send me some money. I do have a Patreon, but it's not actually set up at the moment for receiving donations. So if that is something that anyone is interested in, leave a comment down below and um, give me some ideas of things that you would like as rewards. Because uh, I honestly have no idea what uh, any of you might like from me. I've got uh, I've got a few ideas. Um, but nothing's set in stone yet. So any ideas, leave, leave them down below and, um, bleh, I think I'm done. So after all that rambly bollocks, I, I hope you all enjoyed that last fic and, uh, look forward to hopefully a lot more coming out a lot more frequently. So, cause I've got the time to do it. I just, uh. My location is shit. Still haven't figured out a sign off for this, so... Um... Bye.